So right now there's a lot of talk about a V-shaped recovery, not only in housing, but for the economy in general. So what is a V-shaped recovery? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. And we're also going to touch on things like the recent rise in employment, the you know drop in number of forbearance requests, the recent rise in interest rates, and also how the stock market is just booming how all of that ties into you know what people are predicting with the v-shaped recovery and if you stay tuned to the end i'm going to tell you know my prediction on how all of this ties into the housing market not just this year because i've done videos on you know the housing market predictions for this year but i want to give you a forecast what i see maybe three five years out based on what's happening right now now as you know if you're somebody that's familiar with my channel I'm not here to tell you to buy a house or sell a house. I just want to provide you with the information that I see out there and help you make informed decisions. And that's what my real estate channel is all about. So if you're new to me and you like all things real estate related, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. My name is Jeb Smith. I'm a real estate broker here in Southern California. I don't have an economics degree. In fact, I have a computer science degree and you know, I understand numbers and that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about the numbers that are out there and tie those into things that you know that affect you, um, like housing, like the stock market, and let you make decisions on, you know, going forward and, and how you know help you make informed decisions, if you will. So, let's talk about it first. Let's talk about that V-shaped recovery that I mentioned. What is a V-shaped recovery? Well, it's one that rebounds you know, essentially the same way that it came down. So if we look at where we were back in February, the economy was thriving, housing was great, interest rates were low, you know, everything was kind of moving along. We were, we were set to have a great year. All of a sudden COVID hit, we, it's, we experienced lockdowns, stay at home orders, you know, people couldn't run their businesses, you know, there was stimulus issued, et cetera. And we kind of dropped to this low back in April. And then since April, mid-April or so, we've rebounded. And what people are predicting right now, a lot of the economists out there, a lot of the housing experts, are that essentially we're gonna have this V-shaped recovery where it's going to go back up essentially the same way it came down. So if you know we came down in those two months, essentially we're gonna go back up to where we were in those two months, more or less to where we were. That V, meaning you know we started here on one side, we came down and we're gonna come back up to ex essentially where we left off. And if you're looking at things like the housing market, you're seeing that, right? You're seeing that the housing market never really took a huge hit, at least here in Southern California. Now, if you look at places like New York, New York is, you know, was hit harder probably than anyone else, at least in the United States, and their sales, their buyer demand is down by 80 something percent. So they're, they're really, really, really affected by, by what has happened. Whereas you look at markets like Southern California, where I'm located, our market's thriving, right? Buyer demand is high, inventory is low, interest rates have, have remained low, and that has helped um, drive you know, the, the housing market. And then you look at things like the stock market, right? The stock market was down over 30%, and now it's back up. I mean, not up to where it was, but you know, only probably 10% off at the moment, um, maybe even a little less. I don't know where it closed yesterday, but you know, we had a huge rally yesterday in the stock market based on job numbers, right? So now we we get into job numbers. So we, we heard yesterday that, that employment numbers were way better than analysts had predicted. Um, and with that, the stock market saw a huge jump. And at that same time, when we saw that huge jump in the stock market, we also saw a rise in interest rates. So interest rates kind of jumped, right? They didn't jump you know, a full percent or anything like that, but I'm hearing um, that you know, interest rates jumped somewhere around a quarter percent in, in, on most loan types. So you've got interest rates now jumping a little bit, you've got the stock market booming, you've got housing more or less picking where it left off, so what does all of this mean? Well, you know, if you look at those examples, it, it follows what a lot of the analysts out there are predicting, which is that V-shaped recovery. Now, let's talk a moment about all of this stuff and how it ties in. So, you know, while you have the stock market getting back up to where it was, was if you will, you have earnings. Earnings are, are, are awful. Uh, with a lot of these companies, right? A lot of these companies missed earning expectations, but yet their stock price is, is at all time highs with, with a lot of these companies, right? The market as a whole isn't back to, to where it was, but a lot of stocks are reaching all time highs while earnings are declining. So 
there, you know, a little misnomer there in, in looking at those numbers. Now, if, if you look at that, and then you also look at the number of people out there that have requested um, unemployment, right? Unemployment numbers got, got better yesterday, but there's still a lot of people out there that are unemployed. And a lot of you guys are reaching out to me saying, hey, you're not factoring the number of unemployment um, you know, the unemployment numbers into your expectations of, of, you know, housing predictions. You're not taking into account the forbearances. Well, a couple of days ago, I did a video, which I'll link to here above, where I talked about forbearances not actually equaling foreclosures. And what I mean by that is that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that requested forbearance. And when they requested forbearance, you know, say 20% of those people that actually requested it, um, you know, didn't actually need forbearance, right? Those, those are the actual numbers that are out there, right? I'm not making these up. These are, are what's reported. So out of 5 million or so people who originally filed for forbearance, you know, 20% of those people didn't actually need forbearance. So you still have 80% of the people that did need uh, some sort of forbearance or some sort of help with regards to, um, you know, making their mortgage payment or, you know, being able to push those mortgage payments off into the future. So what does that mean? Well, a lot of those people will get reemployed, right? They will be back in a position where they can continue making their mortgage payments, you know, at the, at the same payment that they had prior to. And Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, they've put measures in place to allow people to take those missed payments and add them onto the principal balance of the loan, the back of the loan, so that they don't have to make these payments in one lump sum, which we've discussed in other videos. And so now these people who are back employed, assuming they have the same job, the same income, all of that stuff, they're able to take, you know, where they were before and continue making those payments. So out of that 80% that's left, you've got to think a good majority of those people will be able to continue making their mortgage payments. Now that still leaves, you know, depending on what numbers we're using here, a lot of people that um, maybe not able to, to continue making those payments. Well, if those people bought prior to two years ago, chances are they actually have equity in their house. They actually in a position where they can sell their house and not, you know, not have to worry about um, being it being a short sale or owing more than it's actually worth. These people are in a position probably to sell their house and get out of it without having any negative effects with you know um, short selling or, or what have you. So you've got a good portion of those people that might not be able to continue making their payments in a position where they can actually sell their houses and you know and be able to walk away and not have to worry about foreclosure. Then you'll have a percentage of people who you know, the lender will try to work with, try to work something out with, and for whatever reason, they can't come to an agreement or something happens and it does turn into foreclosure. So you will have a percentage, a, a portion of the market that does turn into foreclosures. That's, that's reality. That's going to happen. But what does that really mean? Well, you know, as we discussed previously, if all of those foreclosures that are left over actually came to the market, and this is even being said about Airbnbs, right? Short-term rentals. Well, all of these short-term rentals are going to hit the market. Okay, well, if they do, our inventory levels have been so low for so long that, you know, these Airbnbs hitting the market, these foreclosures that could hit the market at some point in the future, it's not going to happen six months from now. Best case scenario is it's probably a year and a half from now, just because of all the measures in place to allow people to take forbearance until 2021, at which point, you know, then if they can't work something out, the foreclosure proceedings start taking place. People can fight that. They can take this out years if they really want to. So it's not like, hey, you know, in six months, all of these foreclosures are going to hit the market. Best case scenario is that you have, you know, these foreclosures or worst case scenario rather is that these foreclosures hit the market sometime in 2021, potentially 2022, depending on what happens. But keep in mind, a lot of these servicers, a lot of these lenders are going to do things to keep these borrowers in homes because if they don't, there's probably going to be litigation that, you know, because of what happened and put people in these positions, lenders are going to have to work with homeowners in order to get them um, in a position where they can pay. That's the reality, right? So now we have, you know, let's take those, those, uh, those forbearance uh, uh, numbers, if you will, out of the equation and talk about employment for a moment. So, you know, a lot of you guys have talked about unemployment. What are we going to do with all these unemployed people? You know, what happens when they don't get jobs? Well, 
Here's my theory on the unemployment. Right now, you've got a lot of unemployed people getting $600 per week in addition to their normal unemployment benefits that was created as part of the CARES Act, right? And in a lot of places, that money is, they're actually making more money now than they were previous. So you have a lot of people that are on those unemployment numbers that aren't actually looking for jobs. They aren't actively looking because they're getting money. They're better off now than they were prior to because of the number, um, the amount of unemployment received. Now, as it currently stands, that unemployment is going to expire here at the end of what, June, July, sometime here in the next um, month or so. At which point, if that's not extended, and chances are it's probably going to be extended to some extent through one of the, the new bills that comes out, but we haven't gotten there yet. So if that does, expire, you're going to have a lot of those people that are currently unemployed start looking for jobs, right? And if that happens, those unemployment numbers are going to go down um, because people right now are in a better position. They don't need to go look for jobs. So why would they, right? And that's what is adding to those unemployment numbers. So I think as the economy continues to improve, you know, stay at home orders are um, reach further stages like here in California, Next week, supposedly, gyms are supposed to reopen reopen, and, and so on and so forth. So you'll have more people in a position where they can go back to work if they want to. That includes bars and all of that as well. But you'll also have some people that say, I'm not going to go back to work because, hey, I'm in, I'm in good shape with the unemployment. Well, once that expires, these people are going to need jobs. Those unemployment numbers are going to drop. So the economy is going to be doing better as a whole once that happens. But let's talk about long term right so what does this mean for housing well in other videos i've predicted you know through the end of the year i think the housing market remains strong i think inventory levels remain low interest rates remain low and buyer demand you know stays where it is and probably goes up in some cases depending on what happens with inventory right so you've got i think the economy continues to thrive for the foreseeable future but I do believe that all of the stimulus, all of the stuff going on right now does have an effect. I do believe it, it affects the stock market because I think the numbers are pumped up in, in a lot of ways. I think the stock market will come back down at some point. Um, I don't know when. It may rise another 10%, 20%. I don't know before that decline happens. but. Right now, I feel like it's artificially pumped up based on what's happening out there because earnings don't support um, the prices that we're seeing, the you know the PE ratios, if you will. Um, at the same time, all of this you know stimulus is being pumped in the economy has to be repaid at some point, so that is an effect. But you also have something that we have that I haven't discussed in any videos, and it's not really out there a lot that I've seen, and that's commercial real estate. The commercial real estate space is going to get hit whether it's the small you know, office space, the retail stuff, or the big corporate stuff, it's going to get hit. And that includes shopping centers, restaurants, all of that, right? You're gonna have businesses go out of business because they're not able to comply with the guidelines that are put out there right now, or in some cases, they just can't um, stay in business because of savings or, or a decline or whatever. So you've got that portion that's going to hit the market at some time. Now, I don't think that's gonna happen this year. It might not even happen next year, but all of that stuff adds up, right? And at some point, it's going to affect the economy. It's going to affect the housing market. Now, I do think the market probably gains another three, four percent this year based on where we are right now. And it may even do that next year. I don't know when this happens, but you know that's been my prediction the whole time. If you're a buyer and you're looking to buy a property, as long as you're looking five, seven years out, you're fine, in my opinion, right? But if you're somebody looking to buy now and you think you're gonna sell it in two years for more profit, if that's your, your strategy, you might need to rethink your strategy, right? Because there's a lot of unknowns out there at the moment that could change you know, the way things move in the future. So that's my prediction going forward. Again, you know, I'm here to provide information. I'm not here to tell you what to do. Right now, the economy looks strong. The housing market looks strong. Sales are great. Buyer demand is great. Things are moving along. So that's where we are at the moment, but there are consequences to 
all of the stimulus is being put out there. There will be additional stimulus probably. That's going to have an effect. Now, is it going to be so far in the future that it affects my kids when they get older? Maybe, but at some point, this stuff has to play into what's going on. And I think there's a lot of businesses out there right now that receive the stimulus and they're able to move, you know, continue doing business because of the stimulus they receive. But what happens when that stimulus runs out? Does more come behind it and keep propping it up? Maybe, but at some point it runs out and there is an effect, right? So that is my thoughts on, on this whole thing. Um, I ranted, I ra you know, I, I'm sorry, uh, but I wanted to put it out there because, you know, I get a lot of um, grief talking about not mentioning unemployment, not mentioning forbearance and all of this stuff that's currently going on, but honestly, I don't believe it has an effect right now. It's, it's a longer term play in the future. Um, so anyway, that's my thoughts. Um, but if you have additional questions, do me a favor, put them below. I'll do my best to address them. If you have comments, leave them below. Um, I'm happy to read them and respond to them. But if there's something you want me to touch on, do me a favor and, uh, and reach out to me directly or put that in the video below and I'll be sure to touch on that as well. As always, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your support and uh, we'll see you again soon. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.